No sleep till. <laughs> This is Link O'San, and he's giving Sean Ash a big shout out, going, Hey, I hope you're a good boy all year, and Santa Claus brings you a legal blower this year. Go, Jim, and that's right. Practice Tree World Championship, South Georgia Motorsport Park, lights out four. Hey, 400 Pro Tree, $50 entry fee, push, pull, or drag the button down, however you're going to do it. Open to anybody and everybody. That's right. If you got some three year old child prodigy, Bring him on down here. Hey, if your old lady's got the magic thumb, bring it on down there. Bracket racers, bring them skills down. Get right up with them heads up, guys, and have at it. Let's see who's got the quickest reaction times in town. $5,000 to win. Hey, and all you keyboard cowboys, talk shit on the internet about how you run your race program and you do this. Hey, $50, and let's see it, five grand. It's your chance to get in the mix. Don't miss it. South Georgia Motorsports Park, lights out for 5,000 Practice Tree World Championship. Be there. Hey, everybody, it's Linko Jim. Bench press contest, that's right. It's, it's the bench press contest. Bench your body weight. $1,000 South Georgia Motorsports Park. Fucking be there. Somebody get this off now. Fuck. Feeling uncomfortable, weren't you? Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's a, that, they're just getting the name out there. Just getting the name out there. All right. Back with Jason Lee, uh, Bruder Brothers, world champions here. Uh, X275, what do you think? I mean, I know you guys kind of. Uh, you did great last year. You won almost everything there was. Uh, rule change to try to slow down everybody. What do you think? What's going to happen? I think it's going totally wrong way with making all these rules. A lot of tracks are going to want to run them. They're not going to want to tech headless lower list and all this stuff. It has to be cut and dry and real simple to get all the tracks to run them. It can't be too crazy. It, it, it seems like there are a bunch of rules in there and stuff. And are we, by going backwards with the with the times now, slowing everything down, are we, is, is Outlaw 275 now not going to be, you know, it seems like it's going to be maybe where everybody's wanting to go to. They're not wanting to slow down their stuff. You know, are we, is X275 really going the wrong direction? That's what you think, too? I think so. And I think LOX is going to be more popular. And I think Ultra Street, or whatever everyone's calling it these days, is going to be well, It was Ultimate Street, but then they X'd it up, took a couple letters off, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lower than X275 Street, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And it's, so, um, it's going to be 490s this year, no doubt. And it's, it's going to be faster than a lot of the X275 guys. So where are they going to race at when a lot of guys move up to LOX and a lot of guys are going to Ultra Street? It's, see, even around here, there's a lot of different. I mean, you got people wanting to run like a real street, ultimate street type class, and then, you know, it, it seems like a lot of confusion right now with what's going on, yeah. is what it seems like. No, definitely, it is. And then it's, when you change the rules so dramatically every year, you scare racers away. You, you scare racers away when they say there's going to be a, a number, but they don't tell you what number it's going to be, and they're going to start taking things away from you. Who wants to spend all that money in something and get something taken away from them every two seconds? We talked to uh, Goss and Mike Freeman this morning. Uh, they were the same way. They said they had ten or $12,000 worth of stuff sitting on the shelf that they had bought, gearing up for the next deal, and then all of a sudden now it's got pulled away from yeah. them. It is crazy. You know, you... You want priority, yeah, of course you want priority in the, in the class, but you want to be able to have a standard set of rules where you could grow on and not be worried about spending ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 every year to yeah, fit those same much. rules every year. And yeah, you get penalized throughout the season ten times. The only thing what I'm afraid of, too, is, is are we going to get through the end of the year, some of the other combinations start going fast, then later on after everybody changes, then they'll be letting the X blow or stuff back in or other heads, you know what I'm saying? Is it, are we just are we just kind of, are we going in a big circle? circle? I think so. It'll get like the stuff now. you got the small block on single kits going 70s, on 23 degree heads going low 70s. you got turbos with less weight, supposedly. Did a little fire drill. We're back, though. Now, Linko couldn't keep the battery going. Um, in a pro light booth, of course. But anyway, so where the hell was we even at for Linko rolled us? Ultimate Street. Ultimate Street and the rule. Of okay, X275, the way. Um, seemed like I was going to ask somebody a question. Vicious Circle, I don't know. Linko's yeah, got. All right. So in. we're in this vicious circle of rules and stuff. Uh, it seems like everybody's. It, from what they're saying to me, they're getting tired of the same kind of deal. 
Is it going to, I mean, is it going to eventually kill off X275? It's be like rocket racing. You know, I heard rumors going faster than 470, there's going to be certain penalized to each car. You, you can't do that. You can't sit there and do that every time somebody tries to go fast. I mean, are they? class for that. It's called NHRA Comp. You know what I'm saying? Comp Eliminator. You know, or and, index and, Yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, that's essentially what it is. Yep. There's an index, and they blow through their index, and they get penalized. So, I mean, there's an environment for that. There's an environment for guys that can't keep up and heads up racing. That's called, you know, index racing. So there's environments for every type of racer. The problem with the X275 world is, in my opinion, is it started out as a bunch of guys just going to have fun, and that was enough. Well, now those guys that just wanted to have fun expect to be the best. And, and when you expect to be the best, when you, when you really don't have the means to put in the work for it, like maybe you only race four times a year, that's fine. Maybe you like golf, maybe you go back and race, well, but when you expect to win, that's, that's wrong. And to expect to try to make those people happy with people like these guys that are out working every single damn day on their combination to be penalized for it, it, it takes the good drag racers out of the sport and out of the class. And to me, that just takes away from the credibility of the class. So that's, that's the problem. I mean, the bottom line is, is if you have the money, which you guys always do at your races, I don't give a damn about any of these local X275 classes and rules. As long as you have the money, you know, you're going to bring the good racers. The good racers are coming, and, and that's where the parity comes in. I don't give a damn about whether or not so-and-so who just pulled their car cover off and blew the dust off their car, you know, as to whether or not they can compete because right. they shouldn't be able to compete. That's not what we're here doing. Right. They're not going to go out there and go 450, 460. Right. That's right. You know, right. they're going to be a 490 car right. out there. We're, we're the type of racers that we're not here to have fun. We're here to bust your ass and then have fun talking shit about it. Right. You know what I mean? That's that's what we're here to do. You know right. what I mean? So, so it's just we shouldn't be penalized. What we're saying is that the people that go out, work hard, spend money, that's right. you know, show up to try to be the elite team, and now they're getting that's penalized. Right. And I understand that not everybody can do that. I totally understand it. I'm there a lot of times during the year. I mean, shit, sometimes you just throw your arms up going, fuck, I can't do it no more. You know what I mean? I understand that. But I don't expect to go to that next race and be a top caliber car, and I don't believe these guys would either with that work ethic. You know, the reason why they expect to be where they're at is because of the work ethic they put in. So, you know, to, to write them out of the rules, I don't give a damn if it's Ulster Street, Pure Street, you know, Gay Street, Index Street, I don't care. You know, that's not drag racing. You know what I'm saying? Drag racing is you're trying to be the fastest car on the property, and everybody else is trying to catch the fastest guy. I mean, when when we put on the race, our, our whole deal from from the very beginning was we wanted to get the best of the best in one place at one time right. and find out who the we're man losing was. the focus of that. That's that's yeah. what's happening here. We're losing the focus. We're yeah. talking about bringing guys and combos up. You know, in the rules, I mean, Terry Elam. Terry Elam's a great example on X275. That guy doesn't race every single day of the week. He probably goes out, and he can correct me if I'm wrong. you got to hunt him down, put him on tape. But, and you know, it's probably, I'm guessing he probably goes out a good seven times a year. And he goes out there and completely destroys what any other turbo car has done. You know what I mean? So what, what, what what's left? How do we know? If he was out... Yeah, it's 25 times like these guys, changing converters 25 times, changing gears 25 times, breaking center sections, breaking motors, sleeves coming out of blocks. I mean, what would it be capable of? You know right. what I mean? Right. You know, when Terry, you're gonna, when Terry's you're gonna, done a phenomenal job. When you're going to push it like they do, you know, and, and you're going to be pulling the motors out or changing head gases or doing so every time you go home, right. you're going to go faster That's than right. everybody else That's goes. That's right. I'm but here you, defending these guys because of what they put into their program. I'm on the phone with them all the time talking about how much shit's broke over there. You know what I mean? Most guys would just quit. Well, these guys didn't quit. You know what I mean? And that's why they're on top at what they do. They followed, you know? they followed the rules, and now they're getting penalized. That's right. That's right. It, it's, it doesn't promote. I mean, you're not attracting good caliber racers. There's a lot of guys out there right now. I deal with it every day. They're my customers that have a lot of money that want to do this shit. And I don't even know what to tell them to fucking build because the goddamn rules are changing every five minutes. And they want to be these guys. They want to be, you know, like what I do and what they do. You know, should I, there, I don't even should know what to there, tell them. Should there be more of, don't call it a world organization or a committee, yes. should there be more people involved in making the rules yeah, for the class? Yes, absolutely. I think that there should, Everybody I mean, should sit down somewhere and go over having, having a meeting, you know, for each power adder has a specific spokesperson or two that attends a meeting on, you know, on If you were just going to run, you know, if you're going to run it at your local event and you got your own rules, it's one thing. But if you're trying to put on a countrywide deal where everybody's following sure. the same rules, we really need to have 
more people's but input. I, I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on that anymore. What that that movement was a great idea because what it did is is, is gain, you know, it gained exposure to what what you're trying to do. Okay, that's already done. The guys are out there. There's hundreds of cars available to do what we're talking about. Now we need to separate ourselves, I believe, from the local stuff, and let's get serious about this shit. Let's have tech. You know what I mean? Let's have scales. Let's not have racers running the fucking scales. Let's have tech guys running the scales, documenting weights, documenting records, you know, signing off on time slips. Let's get serious about this shit. You're, then you're going to bring high caliber racers out. You know what I mean? You got the money. You've got the means. We all this shit's working together. You got the sponsors. You got you got it all. But but the rest of it's just fly by your seat of your pants type shit. And what that does, and I talked to you about it before, is the last thing I want to do as a racer is come 800 miles to a race and you find out fucking so-and-so's cheap. Which I want to know I'm racing the best under fair, accurate rules that I know they're not cheap. I so, you know, people don't want to come from, you know, the West Coast to come race and fear that they may be racing against a cheater that put them on a scale and they got to go home. You know, yeah. put them on the trailer. So, you know, this is, this is the type of shit that I think that can take this to the next level. And that's what we're always talking about, is taking it to the next level. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm glad we wanted to get it cleared up a little bit. Excellent. Congratulations. Congratulations to the cover, Drag Illustrated. Um, congratulations for, you know, all y'all's winning. I hope, um, hopefully it won't uh, put you guys too far back. I mean, I don't know what y'all are going to do for sure. What's, what is y'all's plans as far as X275, Outlaw 275? What, what are y'all thinking? I want to go Outlaw 275. I ain't putting no more money into X275 right now. And I'm uh, going to come out next year, put the F1R on there, and I'm not putting no money in heads, no nothing, because everything could change no matter what. I'm not going to go out to a track, run a good number, and the next weekend, you know, go put, go put another 50 pounds in a car, 100 pounds in a car. It's just not worth it to me. Right. Yeah. Take the heads you know? out, 15, 20 grand in heads and intakes. So. See, I, I think also people, like, you, you'll get the guys that, you'll get a lot of the guys like Jason stuff that it's on y'all's side. Then you got some of the other guys seeing they're they're more concerned about their own deal because they're two or three tenths behind or whatever. So then they'll be like, oh, well, they're just crying or whatever. We, we've seen this time and time again. Fact is, though, you guys went out there and worked hard. You know, uh, between you guys, you know, Mustang Mike, you know, I mean, Pro Charger, everybody involved. You, won, you went out there, you won everything. I mean, it looks like to me, if they'd have left it alone a little bit longer, we would have seen some of them other combinations. Everybody's you know, we, could, we we know for sure that if just a little bit of weight difference, the turbo cars would have been right there for sure. You know what I'm saying? We saw it at the last race, you know, and over at Holly Springs, that everybody was running closer. You know, and then... You got by us, you got the nitrous guys starting to pick up. You got a single nitrous guy on 23 degree head going 73s. Right. Why can't someone with a 400 cubic inch motor with can valve heads with the same thing and not faster? You know, the bottom line is, is we're working with restricted power here. No matter what combination you have, any any combination in that class, and to go a 450 anything is very difficult to do. No matter how much horsepower you have. Absolutely. There's there's outlaw radio guys that can't run 450s with a thousand more horsepower. Right. So it takes a lot of time to to get people up to everybody else's level. Some people figure it out sooner than others, but eventually. You know, two years from now, you go, God damn, look at that 88 millimeter turbo just ran for, you know, 452. You know right, what I mean? Right. So, I mean, that's just how this stuff works. You need to maximize to the hundred is very difficult to do, you know? You need a chassis, you know, you can't do nothing. Well, with all the horsepower you can make, you know, you can't put it down without a chassis. So, you got to work on chassis, trans, converters. You know, there's a bunch of stuff that you got to do with yeah, We got guys showing up with eight point cages and shit, trying, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, what are you going to do with that? You know, trying, last try, year. trying to run 110, 60 foot and go, you know, go a, you know, a three flat, 330. I mean, you ain't going to do that with an eight-point cage and two-year-old tires. You know, you better be, be replacing that shit every race, you know? Well, I can definitely understand y'all's frustration, you know, spending that kind of money, you know, time, effort, put into one program and then just to be you know, jerked out from under you. You know what I mean? Definitely I do. But congratulations on everything y'all did, though. Thanks for always coming out, supporting everything, okay? Thanks, Jason. For